Hi guys, uh, as I said, my name's Cameron Jones. Um, I think you guys should flip on my screen here. Oh, there we go. Shall be here for, uh, from APM to full stack, as you mentioned. Um, what we're gonna be talking about today is a little bit how we can expand New Relic from just monitoring maybe your application and a little, a little bit of depth into things like databases to get a, uh, an, a full view of things like your databases if you're running applications on VMware, uh, VMware or Pivotal Cloud Foundry and even getting you information down to information on like your load balancers, your network devices and sometimes even all the way down to storage or, or your servers. So to start off, I just introduce myself. Uh, my name's Cameron Jones. I work for a company named Blue Medora. Uh, we're fairly new to the New Relic space. We're, we're pretty close partners, though. And uh, just to talk a little bit about what we do at Blue Medora, we're, we're uh, an extensions uh, company. And so what I mean by that is what we're doing here is we're extending New Relic to allow you through the things like New Relic Insights, New Relic Alerts, and New Relic Plugins to see more data than you typically have just with uh, the APM suite. So a little bit uh, before we get started, I, I'll be going through, um, showing you a little bit, talk to you a little bit right now about why we do what we do, um, and talk to you a little bit of, of what issues that we're seeing with uh, the different customers that we work with, and then talk to you a little bit about how we address this issue, and then kind of show you what this looks like in a, in a live New Relic environment. So, with a lot of our users, and when we started uh, getting into the New Relic space, we've talked to a lot of different uh, customers, our, our current customers, uh, as well as different prospects that we were talking to at the, at the time. And a big issue, and of course, a lot of the reason a lot of people are using New Relic and using New Relic APM and, and browsers and synthetics is when the application goes down or when the application has latency issues or, or when there's just a bad user experience, uh, when using the application, customer satisfaction goes down. Um, and it's really quick for the customer to decide that they don't do or don't want to use uh, an application, even if it's a, just a slight latency issue. So when we look at these different issues and we want to address these issues and, and, and want to make sure, you know, let's say we, we're suffering some sort of latency issue, we need to discover whether the issue is coming from the code whether the, the latency issues, maybe you know, something's slowing down the database, maybe there's an issue with the server that it's running on. We have to work with a lot of different teams to be able to solve this issue. Um, none of the teams have a full view of what's going on. You have the, your developers who, who have access to the code and can take a look at the code and, and might even be able to get a little bit deeper into that area, but then you have your DBAs who have the access to the, to the database. Um, Maybe it's a, you know, if the, you go into the network, you have your network administrators, your system administrators. And really what it comes down to a lot of the time is you have to pull in all these different groups of people, you have to pull them into a room and you have to diagnose the issue. And this, this really costs a lot, especially when you're talking about valuable time from a lot of valuable people within the organization having to continually come back and troubleshoot these issues. And when you do troubleshoot these issues, Everyone has their own tool that they're looking at. Every tool only has a little piece of the puzzle. Um, and so it takes time to put these different pieces together and actually discover where the issue is coming from. And so again, that's our goal is to solve that issue for you uh, who, uh, who, have already, who are already using New Relic and uh, be able to let you see all the pieces using New Relic, uh, using the New Relic platform. So you're already getting information on your applications using New Relic. You're all, now when Blue Medora comes in, we want to give you the rest of the layers down the stack. We want to give you information on your databases. We want to give you the information on, on your virtual infrastructure, and along with uh, now working, of course, with uh, New Relic infrastructure for your cloud, uh, your cloud information. And then if, finally, if you, know, if you are running these on-prem uh, applications, giving you the, the look at exactly how the server's running, how, the store, how your storage is working, and how your network and load balancing is working on the infrastructure side. And really what happens when you start to put all these different pieces together, when you start to use it within New Relic, is that you get context. You get more than all these data points that each tool is bringing in. You see the data together. You can identify exactly, follow the, the application issue down to the database, see if the database is having health issues, if it is, maybe it goes down to the server level, maybe it stops there, and we can identify exactly what is causing the, the root issue of any, any uh, problem that we're looking at. 
so to do this, uh, I mentioned it already a little bit, but we integrate with a couple of different areas with New Relic. Uh, we integrate with New Relic plugins, we integrate with New Relic insights, and we uh, integrate with New Relic alerts. And we're going to take a look here in a, in a second at each of those in a, a little bit of detail. But um, when we start to combine all this data inside of the New Relic platforms using these, uh, these different mediums, we break down those different issues I was just talking about. We break down the silos between teams. I mean, each, each team's still going to be using their tool, but when you're, when you're unifying a New Relic, everyone can come together and diagnose the issue using New Relic. And it really lets us to start to take this data that we're pulling in from all these different areas. We can employ with confidence, and, and we can troubleshoot quicker. And, and when, there, when there is an issue, we can identify exactly which area of the stack it's coming from. So let's start by talking a little bit about our plugin integrations. Uh, just a, a quick poll of the room. How many people have uh, tried to install a plugin on New Relic? OK, so, so only a couple. So New Relic uh, has actually made plugins very simple to use, very simple to use, uh, to install and, and start to configure. They have a, a nice thing called the New Relic Plugin Installer, which is basically a one-line command that we can use to install any of our plugins. Now, when you, start, when you install the plugin, we're going to have you connect to, to, let's say in this case, we'll take one of our database plugins, for example, to connect to a database. And then out of the box, we're going to give you the dashboards that you're used to seeing in things like APM, uh, or if you're using browser or, or mobile, out of the box dashboards that are going to show you very quick different graphs of key things like your, your overall system performance, and then deep dive dashboards into things a little bit lower level if we take our example of a, a database again, down into things like the database instance or all the way down to individual query levels. Now we then take these metrics that we're pulling in with New Relic plugins, and we allow you to do alerting on any of these plugins, so, or on, on any of these metrics that we pull in. So we pull in uh, a couple hundred metrics for each of these different plugins that we're looking at. And you know, looking at them in a graph and being able to watch these and, and identify where the problem is is great, but of course you can't sit here and watch dashboards all day. Um, and so really what you want is, is the ability to be warned and be able to know when you have to come into New Relic, when you have to come and look at these plugins. And so all of our metrics have native integration with the New Relic alerts where you can set both uh, warning as well as critical level alerts uh, to, to bring you back into New Relic and let you know when something's going wrong. And finally, and, and to me, this is probably one of the most exciting ones. Uh, we'll just do another quick poll. How many people have used New Relic Insights? OK, so quite a few more. Uh, New Relic Insights is, is a great way. And we'll spend some time showing you kind of what the plugins look like here. But now alongside getting your APM data, uh, getting any other data that New Relic's pulling in insights, you'll have our data side by side with that. And what this allows us to do is we can take this data, we can use the uh, NRQL, write different queries to pull in data, not only from APM, but from our plugins as well, combine these to create things like custom, uh, custom dashboards and custom data apps to be able to show us our entire environment using one custom dashboard. So from here, I'm going to jump here real quick into uh, to a demo and show you a little bit uh, around a couple of our different plugins here, show you how they integrate with uh, New Relic plugins, New Relic alerts, and uh, New Relic insights. So right now, what you can see is I've navigated over here to um, my plugins page. Um, and we can see a list, a large list here. And I'll go over all the different plugins that we have configured. Um, but for this time right now, we're looking at our Oracle database plugin. When we go to the home page of the Oracle database plugin, we're going to see uh, a couple of different things here. First, uh, we can see all the different instances that we have configured. So we have, I don't know, about 12 different instances. We only have the top one here collecting data right now. But with this plugin, we can see things like uh, a couple of the key metrics right away on the home page. We're going to bring out information like weights, our average CPU usage, and the number of active sessions on the database instance right now. But if we want to jump in and get more, uh, more detailed information, we can go in and then click into the plugin to be able to identify some of the key metrics that, that Bloomador is pulling in with these out-of-the-box dashboards. So again, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, New Relic makes it really easy to install these things. It's almost a one-liner. We set up our database configuration info. And then out of the box, we get to see all of these dashboards um, that basically come with the plugin. 
so we always start with something uh, we like to call the system overview dashboard. And the system overview dashboard is something that we're going to bring a different metrics from across the plugin. Um, and what we're going to do with the, and we're going to show you kind of key metrics that are going to give you overall health information about whatever technology we're integrating with. So in the case of Oracle here, uh, we're going to start by just showing you the, number, the total weights across the instance. So we're going to show you weights. Then over to the right, we'll show you uh, the different session uh, statuses and, and how many of them we have. So in here, you know, we have uh, at the time, at the data point I'm looking at right now, we have 55 waiting sessions. We can continue to scroll through, look at our unblocked sessions, our inactive sessions, our active sessions, and, and finally our block sessions. And we can see here, there's a little point where we had a little bit of a, a spike here with our block sessions, but overall, block sessions staying very low, not a lot of need for concern. As we continue to scroll down, continue to look at a lot of the instance level information, we're looking at things like instance CPU usage. So we can make sure that the CPU usage of the plugin never goes too high. And again, looking at things where this uh, CPU usage is coming from. So whether it's the host CPU, the CPU against the, the database instance, or background process CPU, uh, graphing multiple CPU information with this graph. Um, a couple of flat line graphs, start, first one start here, where we look at something like table space size. And the nice part about these flat line table space uh, graphs, and, and we can see a couple more at the bottom we'll look at here in a second, but things like database file size and control file size, is that with these different dashboards that are, are meant to be these flat line dashboards, if they increase or decrease in any way, we know that's because somebody went in, maybe it's a DBA, maybe it's somebody uh, on the development team, maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe we have to identify who it is, but we can immediately see that somebody changed a configuration setting to be able to adjust this table space size. Now, at this point, if this or causes any performance issues, we can identify and, and try to figure out why that person did it. Now, as I mentioned, we start to go, uh, this is kind of our highest level, but we do like to give a little bit of deeper level information here as well, where we can look at things like query execution time and query wait time uh, and identify how many queries that, you know, do we have any queries that are really going up and above as far as execution time or wait time above any other queries we have? And we can tr track that over time. And then finally, kind of to wrap up the bottom of this dashboard, again, database file size and control file size with those different um, flatline dashboards or uh, graphs. Now, to dig in a little bit deeper, we're going to, let's say we want to take a look at more instance level metrics. We're going to provide these different dashboards here. And we're going to see some similar information. For example, we'll see in the top left again, we're looking at the number of weights uh, that we looked at with the system health. And that's because with the system overview, we're trying to give you an overall view of the entire system. But on top of that, we'll look at, look at the weights. And then right next to it, we're going to give you the total amount of time weighted. So maybe you have a large amount of weights, but the overall time isn't long. Or, or maybe vice versa. Maybe you have very few weights, but it's actually causing us a lot of time. I'll give you the, the more detailed information here. Scroll down, we look at CPU and session usage, but then we go into to cache information as well on the database instance. So things like cache hit ratio and our overall cache size, both for the buffer and the transfer. Um, and then finally, our read and write time against the database. So if we're starting to run some queries, maybe we saw on the system overview page that we have um, longer uh, query wait time, maybe we can identify if this is related to a, a, a large number of waits or maybe even a, a latency issue with a large number of reads that we're taking from the database. And then finally, I won't go through all the dashboards, but to finally go down and, and show you kind of the depth of the queries, and we'll get even a little bit more in depth with this when we look into insights. But again, identifying which queries are being called the most often, which ones are taking the largest amount of execution time, which ones have a, a large wait time, and is, is that a spike that we see, or, or is it a, you know, a, if it's a spike, maybe we don't have to worry about, but maybe it's a prolonged uh, increase in wait time. We might want to investigate it. CPU time, uh, the number, how uh, memory of the queries, and as well as finally, just the total number of executions at the bottom. Now, I don't want to stick completely to, to Oracle here, and we will get a little bit back to it uh, when we jump into uh, New Relic Insights. But I'm going to jump over to one of our other plugins here. Um, and this is going to be our, our vSphere plugin. So our vSphere plugin is a little bit different than what our database plugin does. So our database plugin focused a lot around showing you query as well as the health of the database. 
Whereas vSphere is going to give you an overall glance at, at what your entire virtual environment looks like. And naturally, a lot of this can be limited as well to show specific VMs or specific hosts that maybe our, our, our tier one applications are running on. Um, but from the top level here, we're going to show you just the number of what you're monitoring. So let's say we, we are monitoring uh, a, a key data center that we're running production level code on. We'll see the number of, right up front, the number of distressed hosts, VMs, clusters, and data stores. And this takes a couple of different things into, into uh, effect that would affect the overall health of a host. But we can see one of the things here is that our, our host here is colored red. And this is, I just want to give a brief example of how it integrates here with New Relic Alerts. So with any of these top level metrics that we show you in this page, uh, we can see a quick and easy way just to set some caution and critical alerts. And what I had done earlier is set up, you know, if we had more than two distressed hosts at any time, we wanted to have a critical alert. And this, again, uh, integrates natively with New Relic Alerts. So if you have your New Relic Alerts to be set up to send you emails, to have you uh, get uh, SMS alerts, this will be sent out just like any uh, alert that you're using with APM right now. Now again, let me click in a little bit more and I'll show you, we won't go as in depth with some of these dashboards that we just did with Oracle, but let me give you a kind of a, a higher level view of, of what we're doing here with VMware as well, because it does give you a good glance of how some of these different components may work. So in this case, we're looking at the system overview again. Again, system overview focused almost completely around health uh, to be able to see that kind of metric. And from here, we can see the different statuses. So again, we're going to show you the host statuses, how many are healthy, how many are unhealthy, or in a critical or warning state. Same thing with the virtual machines. And then more in-depth information on why these might be in those un unhealthy states. So looking at things like CPU and memory utilization and our top 10 VM list to show you which ones are the most unhealthy. Again, uh, it's very similar information here, but uh, around host CPU and memory utilization. because. Not always when you're running, a, especially when you're running virtual workloads, can, will the, the health be entirely dependent on the virtual machine? A lot of the times it can be on the underlying hosts that the virtual machine is running on. So we want to make sure those are healthy as well. And then finally, some more kind of in-depth metrics. So we're looking at something like v, uh, VM CPU ready, which is how often the virtual machine is ready to run a task but has to wait on the host to give it CPU. So 7, 6, 5%, these things look low, but if 7% of the time that the, the VM is ready to run something and can't, uh, that's actually a very uh, high, level inter or high level issue. So again, a, a great example of something we could set to a, a threshold here where you know, if it's above 5%, I want to be warned because we're not getting the, the CPU cycles that our production workload needs. Getting a little bit into storage here. Uh, with the data store information, so just ensuring that we have space left on our data store, we can see a lot of ours, you know, five of our top 10 or six of our top 10 here are above 65%. It might be something we, want, we need to address fairly shortly. And then from here, again, we can go deeper, and I'll just click into one real quick, which is take a look at, you know, if we want to go from the overall system overview, we're looking at VMs, hosts, we're looking at data stores, into uh, specific things like looking at the production VMs that we've decided to monitor here. So we want to make sure that none of these at any time are, are too high in any way. And for example, here we have a, uh, one of our, our systems here that we decided is a, a production system. Something key for us to look at is pegged at CPU at 100%. So making sure that things like this don't happen. Our CPU percent ready, disk utilization, memory utilization, and of course, network and disk throughput as well. So we can ensure that uh, the, the applications running on top of, our, on, uh, on top of VMware are already always running at a, a top tier performance. From here, I just want to click in just a little bit just to show you a little bit more around alerts. Uh, we won't spend too much time here, but let me click into alerts and just show our alert history. because This is something I think uh, a lot of people who maybe are a little bit new to alerts or a little bit new to how plugins work with alerts uh, can start to see a lot of value here. So, um, we can see right now we have the, the alert that's in progress that we looked at earlier. We have greater than two distressed hosts. Um, that was open, it looks like on 11.7. So it's been open for over 10 days. Um, something that, you know, uh, we immediately want, you know, at this point should have been addressed. Something that we want to take a look at. But every now and again we get alerts on some sort of spike or maybe something happened from, from 3 to 5 in the morning. Maybe it only hit a warning level, maybe it didn't go all the way to critical or maybe it did go to critical, but no, nobody took care of it overnight. 
using the, the New Relic alert history, we can go through each of our plugins. We can see that, you know, okay, we were looking at the, the current one that we're seeing with VMware. We always also had a, a SQL Server alert that, that procced at 4.45 in the, in the morning. Uh, we had a, you know, a couple others. Here's one, another one with our Oracle plugin. And we can kind of get a, an alert history of everything that's currently happening, but then also things that are hap have happened earlier today, things that happened in, uh, yesterday, this week, or, or even you know, further in the past, anything that's happened prior to last week. So we can use this alerting system to now not only look at APM, but to look at plugins and be able to see any of the alerts that are going on at any time in our stack, at, um, not only currently, but in the past as well. Now, finally, the last area, and, and as I said, probably the, the area to me that's most exciting is, is New Relic Insights. So with New Relic Insights, we're taking a look at um, a lot of the different information here. We can pull in, you know, we, we looked at a lot of these different dashboards that we saw with New Relic uh, plugins. And with these, we can pull in 30 to 50 different key metrics that we can show you in dashboards. But once we get to New Relic Insights, we're going to be pulling in hundreds of metrics for each of these different plugins. And to give you kind of an idea of what that looks like, I'm going to start here on this page where we can write custom NERCL queries to show any of the data that we pull in with these plugins. So I'll start here. I'm just going to do a select star from one of the tables that we pull in using Oracle. So I'll select uh, from, uh, do a select star from, and then automatically New Relic Insights is going to give me a list of all the different tables that we pull in, not only through New Relic products, but also through the plugins that we have installed here. So let me just start off with Oracle. And if I'm trying to look for something specific for Oracle, I can start to type this in, and we can see all the different tables that are brought in. And Again, this exceeds kind of the, the different amount of uh, graphs and, and pages that we were able to show in plugins, so we can get a lot more in-depth information. But let's, start, let's just start with one that we kind of looked at earlier, which is uh, the instance level metrics. So here we see our instance collection. I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to go over here and click Run. <clears throat> and this is just going to give you kind of an idea of the different metrics that we pull in here uh, with our Oracle plugin. So we're going to do it in a little bit of a chart here, kind of the way that we do a, a display right now before we start to change this information into different graphs and, and other ways to display the data. We'll start, and I'll, I'll scroll through some of these different metrics here that we can see. We we'll start here with some things like the, the number of active sessions in the foreground, what's the current state of the Oracle plugin, uh, or sorry, of the Oracle database that the plugin's monitoring, is the archiver enabled, what's our average I.O. time, our read time, our write time, and we can kind of scroll through here and just see, you know, let's look at our background CPU usage per second, our background checkpoints per, per second. And we can continue to kind of scroll through, and I obviously won't go through all of these, but as you can kind of see, there's hundreds of different metrics that we now make available within New Relic Insights that allow you to start to slice and dice these metrics, choose the ones which are most important for your organization, choose which ones are most important for you to take a look at when you're trying to diagnose your application and create these, cu these custom uh, dashboards and data apps. Now, let's take a look at maybe uh, one that's a little bit more specific. As the instance collection is going to show you a lot of different metrics that we can show on the instance level. So let me uh, move back just a little bit, and we'll take a look at, let's say we want to take a look at the OS, uh, OS user information. And the OS user information is going to be focused a lot around looking at um, a lot of the different uh, foreground processes. So things that looking at like the number of active sessions, the number of uh, blocked sessions, the blocked unknown sessions, and giving you different counts and exactly you know, how many sessions do we currently have on this database that are being blocked. Um, and if this goes, you know, we can, again, we can set an alert to this and say, you know, anything that, if we ever have more than one block session, we want to be, we at least want to know about it. And we can continue kind of through, through here, looking at things like our unblocked sessions, our waiting sessions, uh, how many different user types that we have connected, um, you know, and exactly, you know, what's the, what's the name when we're connecting to this database? You know, is it, is it root, is it system? What, what are we using when we connect here as well? Now, if you're not horribly familiar with Insights, or again, if you haven't used it very in depth with uh, any of these different plugins that, that we have out in the, in the marketplace right now, a great way to get started with this and, and actually see how you can move graph-like data, or, or sorry, chart-like data like that into a graph like this is using the Data Explorer. 
So we'll start here, in a, um, and we'll, let's say we want to take a look. Again, we can select here. We can see any of the different metrics that we're pulling in, again, with all those different tables that we have. Uh, and just sticking with Oracle for the time being, let's take a look at our, uh, our Oracle query information. And so we go into a little bit more in depth, and we can do that here with uh, New Relic Insights. So we're going to take a look at our, our Oracle query information. Uh, let's say we want to look at data for the past day. And then um, let's say we can look at any of the different information we want to see here. So let's, say, let's just start with the, the number of executions that we're running. So these are our average executions over the past day. We can see that you know maybe rose up a little bit um, after uh, 6, 6 p.m. Uh, on Wednesday, and it's kind of stayed higher since then. But let's say we want a little bit more in-depth detail. We can also group this information by something like SQL text. And here what we're going to show you is all the different query statements that are being run. They're average executions. And if we hover over one of these things, we can even get the full query text that's being run. So from here, we can quickly identify, in this case, we're looking at average executions. But which queries are being run the most often, which ones um, it, it, making sure that maybe, you know, maybe the assist is supposed to be run all the time, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's a, a query that's being run, you know, maybe this is a, a piece of inefficient code that we keep running the same query over and over and over again. We can identify that. But it doesn't have to only be with average executions either. We have a lot of different metrics that you can show here as well. So if you want to do something, let's say we want to look at disk reads. We can look at the average number of disk reads over the past day, and again, looking at which queries are doing the most disk reads when they're being run. We can look at, you know, the, the kind of the list here goes, there's a, a lot of different uh, areas that we could look at, but, um, you know, if we want to just take a look at IO wait time, or if we want to take a look at uh, the physical reads or physical writes, uh, again, we looked, already looked at uh, executions, but the total amount of time that's taken one of these queries to run. And we can take a look at all these different graphs and graph it over time. And as we change through these different things, the nice part is up here at the top, New Relic's creating that NERQL query. So again, if you're not that familiar uh, or, or just getting started with New Relic Insights, this is a great way to start to learn how to make these different graphs because it's showing us the exact query that we need. And if I click Run up here, we'll get that exact same graph that we were just looking at using the Data Explorer. And of course, we can do some customizations from here as well. If we want to take a look at it, uh, more of a stack graph, or if we want to look at more of a, a line chart here, we can take a look at that. And then we can even take a name. We can title the, the graph that we're looking at, give it some notes, and we can add it to a custom dashboard. And these, these dashboards become pretty powerful, because as you create these different custom dashboards using APM, using uh, browser or synthetics, or the other, any other new relic tool you're using alongside with any of these plugins, you can start to create these different dashboards that can combine together and create pretty powerful data apps, which is basically just a grouping of dashboards. Yeah? The, the data we're looking at right now is completely from the Oracle database through the, through the Blue Medora plugin. Yep. So, when we start getting this information and pushing this into insights and creating these data apps, I, I want to show you a couple of different data apps that, that we've worked with that we've made uh, to take a look at a couple of these different things. So we have a couple of different dashboards here. We have our, our critical applications monitoring dashboard. We also have our Oracle databases dashboard. So I'm going to start with Oracle just to kind of keep the track of, of what we've looked at, and then we'll see how that can kind of combine with some of our other plugins to give you a view of a, a lot of different plugins working together. So we'll start here, and this is just a dashboard that, that we made using New Relic Insights um, and, and with the ability to kind of take a look at a couple of different things within our, our Oracle instance. And the nice part about this, and this is something that uh, was released with our latest, latest release of our plugins, and it's pretty powerful, is that we've created relationships between our different objects in our plugins. And what I mean by that is, uh, traditionally when we install this, let's say we'd configure five or six different database instances um, to collect data from. They would have a certain number of databases. They'd have a bunch of queries. When we look at dashboards like these, we want to be able to identify, for example, which query is a part of which database instance. And so something that we thought was very important for, for us and our users was to be able to create those relationships between those different 
uh, between the databases, between the instances, and be able to show you kind of the relationship between, the, between them. So I'll start by selecting um, one of our, our database selectors up here at the top. Um, another great part about uh, New Relic Insights is uh, we can bring in configuration information like this as well. So it is a lot of performance-based information, but it's also a lot of configuration-based information, which can help us identify quick things like, you know, is flashback enabled? Well, no, not in this plugin. That might be something we want to go and make sure is enabled in the future. So we can see a lot of our configuration information here. We're going to show you um, our different health scores here for, um, again, different things that are configured or not configured. And as we scroll down, we can see things like process usage, session usage, our average CPU usage, and our total actives. But here's where I was talking about earlier. We have all of our different instances that are related to the different databases that we have up at the top. And if we select this instance, this is going to move us to a whole other dashboard that's a part of this data app. So when I come in, we can see that we were now on the instance details dashboard. And by selecting that instance we had on the previous page, we actually already put a filter on this page to only show us information on this Oracle instance. So in this case, we're seeing, again, key metrics and performance metrics, as well as configuration details, uh, even down to things like the, the uh, hosts that we're connecting to, to to collect this information over here on the right, and then all the related queries underneath uh, that are being run against this instance as well. And here we can see, we chose to take a look here and look at these different queries by query ID. But again, we just looked in with query text as well. We can kind of take a look at both. But let's say we wanted to select, and I'll continue to dig through. Uh, I jumped now into our query dashboard where we uh, have the filter on the query that I've selected here at the top. Uh, and we can see key information about that query, things like that we've looked at previously, but things like read and write uh, requests, read and write time, number of executions, uh, CPU time. And if we want to see what then this query that we're looking at looks like compared to our others, we can then remove the filter and take a look at what all the queries look like uh, when we want to take or, and compare the query we were just looking at to all the other queries running again on this database. Now, I'm going to take a, a, a little bit step back and jump just to that other data app. So this one was completely focused around Oracle. Um, and our goal is to kind of show and, and actually use this dashboard to identify everything within our Oracle plugin, expose the information that we're bringing in with uh, New Relic Insights. Now, we have another data app here, and th let me just click into it. And this is where I start to talk about being able to combine different plugins, New Relic data, all within uh, one, one dashboard. So uh, in this case, what we did, we took a, a couple of our different plugins. Um, we looked at things like our, uh, Oracle here at the top, so a lot, of, you know, a lot of similar metrics, things we've been looking at so far. Um, but then right underneath it, we took a look at, uh, let's say we have a, a, a cluster of um, virtual machines here that we want to take a look at. Um, and so we took uh, a look at what kind of metrics do we want to see for our VMware environment here. So we have a couple of clusters, a couple of hosts, um, and we wanted to divvy up those hosts to see what our overall, uh, what, what CPU utilization looks like across these hosts, so which ones are using the most. Quickly can identify that this host is using the most, and it's uh, pegged at you know 100% right now. It's a very similar thing we can do and look at uh, memory utilization. You know, this one's here at, at 90 memory utilization right now, so 90%. And they'll adjust as they kind of change here because these dashboards can update as we collect new data. Then we're going to bring in, underneath it, we're going to bring in virtual machine information. So we wanted to look at something like balloon memory on our virtual machines. And right now, out of the, all of the virtual machines that we cared about, we can only see that you know, one is much higher than the rest. But then also just making sure that our virtual machines, the ones that we care about, are powered on at all times. Nothing's going down. Um, so we have a, a quick dashboard to identify that as well. And we can kind of continue to scroll through. Now where we're going to even look at, you know, we haven't spent too much, but I had mentioned earlier, we also bring in these infrastructure level uh, information here as well. So looking at things like Cisco Nexus, what's our, what's our throughput look like? Um, the different NetApp aggregates that we're storing this information on, how full are they? What's the capacity look like there? Going down to one of our load balancers. So uh, F5 is a load balancer that we might be using to go between these different virtual machines that we're monitoring. What's our total transmitted and total received throughput look like? In this case, you know, we have no traffic right now. Is this an issue because 
the, the big IP, uh, you know, some, some, something went down, or do we just have no traffic? Why aren't people being able to come to our site, being able to identify that immediately? And then continually to move down through some more F5 information here at the bottom, but even down to things like the, the pool availability. So I can see I have all these different nodes and only one of them's currently available. Um, you know, we're all, we're all gonna be load balancing to the, to the same pool member here. So with insights, this kind of gives us the power not only to, to, to get more in-depth metrics that, that we can pull with plugins, but also allows us to combine these metrics uh, with APM, uh, with different plugins. Uh, and so pulling in basically all your new Relic data as well as all your external plugin data into one spot and create these nice custom dashboards to identify exactly what you want to identify when you're taking a look at them. I'm gonna jump back here real quick. Can we jump back to the slides? Oops. Try it again. Well, I'll start to talk through them at least. Um, so just a, a couple of wrap-up slides anyway, just to talk to you guys a little bit about what's available in the marketplace right now uh, and, and what you guys can take a look at with, with our plugins. So uh, in the last uh, six months or so, Bloomador has released 25 different plugins into the marketplace. Uh, we focused around four different areas, uh, focusing around things like virtualization, uh, uh, databases, our storage plugins, as well as our network and compute plugin. And so the, the different plugins that you can identify, you can go to the plugin, uh, plugin central, you can find them there, you can go uh, search for Blue Medora plugins. But the, the different plugins, for example, under virtualization, uh, we, we bring in information both around VMware that we showed today, but also around uh, Cloud Foundry. So both Pivotal uh, as well as native Cloud Foundry, you can get information there. Uh, databases, we looked at a lot at Oracle, but we do bring in other traditional uh, RDBMS databases like my, uh, MSSQL, DB2, uh, open source ones like MySQL and Postgres, um, and that information too on things like Mongo as well as DynamoDB. Uh, a number of different storage vendors, so both EMC VNX uh, and EMC uh, VMAX, Nimble Storage, NetApp and NetApp E-Series, and then finally uh, a, a, a lot of uh, network as well as servers looking at things like F5, NetScaler, Net Cisco Nexus, Cisco UCS, Dell and HP, uh, as well as Nutanix. And then um, a little bit of just again talking about what we do here um, around uh, our plugins, just to kind of do a quick recap and then I'll, I'll open it up for questions. All of our plugins uh, are natively integrated with uh, New Relic Insights as well as uh, New Relic Alerts and New Relic plugins. Um, put together, we can start to see all these, uh, these pieces come together, can create that full stack visibility within, within New Relic. Um, they're all MPI compatible, so that kind of one line configuration or installation and, and configuration. And then we fully support all our plugins. So if you guys have any, uh, you know, as you start to use the plugins, you, you, you maybe have any issues with it, we're happy to jump on and, and help you with any of the, the support issues as well. So um, with that, I will open it up to if anybody has any questions on the plugins I showed or any other plugins. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I missed the first part of it. Oh. Compatible. Hello, hello? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it compatible with uh, Cassandra, uh, data stacks, no SQL? Sure, yeah, so each of our plugins is specific to a different technology. Um, so right now, we, uh, we don't have one for Cassandra, but it's very soon on the roadmap. In fact, it's uh, currently in development. Um, and then uh, some of the other ones are gonna be coming down the line, but right now, we don't have support for those. Okay. Uh, my other question is, uh, is are these plugins uh, one-time cost or? Yeah, that's a good question. So we do pricing based on a, a, a monthly pricing plan, um, uh, and it's kind of dependent on the different technology that, so we have a, a pricing for database, our database plugins, a different price for our network or, or other ones, uh, but it is a, a monthly, but we do yearly renewals as well. Um, and we actually have a, a booth right upstairs with, with one of our sales guys who might be able to help answer actual pricing questions okay. as well. All right, thanks. Yeah. 
Have you guys done any uh, integration with mainframe technologies, legacy systems? Uh, is there something specific? Specifically CICS and DB2 for ZOS. Okay. Um, ag nothing right now, but I'd be happy to talk to you about it after, after the uh, conference. So a lot of, I'll just give a, a little bit of uh, information kind of about how our roadmap works. And a lot of our roadmaps completely driven by customer requests. Um, and so, you know, we've had a, actually had a couple of requests already. So the more requests we kind of get and, and we build up, that helps drive what we're going to push into the New Rock Marketplace. Um, we do plan to continue to grow the amount of plugins that we put into New Relic uh, pretty rapidly. So if uh, there's something afterwards, I'd like to talk to you about it and kind of get your, your use case. So, yeah. Any other questions? Perfect. Well, thank you guys very much. Um, if, I'm Cameron, and if you have any questions, I'll stick around after.